Okay, so this video is a look at 1995 Batman Forever film comic. I've already done videos about 89 Batman and Batman Returns and their film comic versions, so now it's Batman Forever's turn. As usual, the comic is slightly different to the film we got. I've got two versions of this comic, a big one and a small one. Ironically, the bigger one is cheaper than the small one. That's 95 economics for you. I think I'll use the big one for this. This is different from the get-go. The comic opens with the staff of Arkham Asylum finding out Two-Face has escaped and scrawled on the wall, the bat must die. Then we're in Wayne Enterprises, where Bruce Wayne turns down Edward Nigma's project, sees the back signal and races to the bank Two-Face has broken into as Batman. The film starts here, with Batman collecting his gear in the Batcave before racing into Gotham City in the Batmobile to that bank. The scene with Edward Nigma is later on in the film, and the scene in Arkham Asylum is not in the film at all but they must have shot it as it can be seen briefly in U2's Batman Forever music video, which leads me to believe the comic shows how the film was supposed to start and was re-edited at the last minute. In the film, after Batman's encounter with Two-Face, it cuts to that scene at Wayne Enterprises where Bruce Wayne says no to Edward Nigma's work. As this scene was used earlier in the comic, it cuts to the scene where Ed kills his boss and starts to take revenge on Bruce Wayne. In the film, when Two-Face has taken over the circus, Ed is watching the events on TV. He must be doing something better with his time in the comic, as this isn't shown. In the comic, the car chase sequence between Batman and Two-Face's gang happens after his rooftop talk with Chase Meridian. In the film it happens much later on. In the film when Two-Face and the Riddler have officially teamed up, it cuts to them on a crime spree. In the comic, the crime spree is spoken about on the TV while Dick Grayson practices his martial arts, then cuts to Two-Face and Riddler enjoying the brain drain machine where Two-Face says to Riddler, Oh my God, Jim Morrison was right. About what he replies, everything. This isn't in the film, but I wish it was, as Val Kimmer played Jim Morrison in the Doors film, and plays Batman in this. It would have been a nice little film in joke. In the film, when Dick Grayson steals the Batmobile and beats up a street gang who are harassing a girl, He's interrupted by Batman showing up. In the comic, he just meets up with him back in the Batcave, which is a bit flat really. In the film, when Two-Face and the Riddler know Bruce Wayne is Batman and invade Wayne Manor, Riddler blows up the Batcave, then stops Two-Face from shooting Bruce in the head. In the comic, he blows up the Batcave after he stopped Two-Face from murdering Bruce. In the film, when Batman and Robin officially become a team, Batman takes the Batwing and Robin takes the Batboat to Riddler's Lure. Both craft get hit, the Batwing becomes the Batsub briefly and they tangle with Two-Face's henchmen in the water. In the comic, they both get in the Batwing. It turns into the Batsub for a bit, and that's how they get to Riddler's Lure. It cuts out a lot of action. The last major change is left for the very end. In the film, Bruce meets Chase outside Arkham Asylum to make sure Riddler's brain is toast and he doesn't remember that he's Batman. In the comic, there's only Alfred outside, while Batman and Robin are out looking over Gotham City. So that was a look at the 1995 Batman Forever film comic, and next I'll do Batman and Robin. 
So hopefully you join me on that one too.